20 parts per billion of fire. It's been in Venus's atmosphere, mostly in a layer 50 to 60 kilometers above the surface. This unexpected revelation ignited curiosity among scientists worldwide. It prompted them to investigate potential mechanisms for both abiotic and biotic phosphine production. Biotic phosphine production is associated with life on Earth, particularly bacteria thriving in oxygen-poor environments like swamps, sludge, and animal intestines. However, the presence of phosphine on Venus is particularly interesting due to the planet's harsh conditions and highly acidic atmosphere. This discovery challenges our understanding of where life could potentially exist in the cosmos. Now, finding phosphine doesn't mean we found aliens on Venus. But it got scientists thinking about what might be happening high up in Venus's thick, cloudy sky. For Elon Musk, however, the goal is much larger. Elon isn't just interested in finding aliens on other planets. He has a grander plan. He wants to build homes for people in space. So this discovery on Venus isn't just about possibly finding aliens. It's about coming up with new ideas for exploring space. This discovery challenges our understanding of where life could potentially exist in the cosmos. Now, finding phosphine doesn't mean we found aliens on Venus, but it got scientists thinking about what might be happening high up in Venus's thick, cloudy sky. For Elon Musk, however, the goal is much larger. Elon isn't just interested in finding aliens on other planets. He has a grander plan. He wants to build homes for people in space. So this discovery on Venus isn't just about possibly finding aliens, it's about coming up with new ideas for exploring space. And it's not just Elon Musk who's excited. Dr. Michio Kaku, a highly regarded scientist, thinks this discovery is a big deal too. He says it's not just about Venus, it's about learning more about life beyond Earth, making other planets more habitable for humans, and exploring space even more in the future. Even though Musk agrees with the scientists' recent discoveries about Venus, he thinks we should focus on something incredibly vital, water. Water is a crucial building block for life, at least as we understand it on April's speech. Well, he hasn't even said anything, you know. Um, he has to at least say something or post something for there to be incremental, painful, painful content. Get NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube. Why? You no, know, Donald Trump's son-in-law is Jewish. He's a Jewish guy. I'm pretty sure he's not anti-Semitic. Okay. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he's at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, this, this, so, so, so uh, the problem is that a lot of these um, organizations, like I said, have, they've really been captured by the woke agenda, and they're, they're pushing, um, you know, a series of beliefs and values that I think are often in, uh, contrary to their, what, what they're done as belief. In this age of technological marvels, Elon Musk stands as a modern Prometheus, igniting the fires of imagination and reminding us that within the forge of relentless labor, great feats are molded and the future is shaped. In fact, I think a lot of people perhaps don't quite realize that they're already a cyborg. So you've got your limbic system, you're sort of 
basic drives, your cortex, which is the thinking and planning, and then you have tertiary layer, which is your computers, your devices, your phones, laptops, all the servers that exist, the applications. And in fact, I think probably a lot of people have found that if you leave your cell phone behind... Take it away. If you, get your, like, yeah, if you forget your cell phone, it's like missing limb syndrome. You know, you've like... Where'd that thing go? Losing your cell phone is like missing limb syndrome. So, it, because it is, it, your cell phone is an extension, extension of yourself. The limitation is bandwidth. So you... The rate at which you can input, or I should say output information into your phone or computer is very slow. So with a phone, it's really just the, the speed of your thumb movements. And with, you know, best case scenario, you're a speed typist uh, on a keyboard. Uh, but even that data rate is very slow. We're, we're talking about tens, maybe hundreds of bits per second, whereas a computer can communicate in trillions of bits per second. So... So, so the and this is admittedly somewhat of a you know hail mary shot or whatever is long shot, is that if you can improve the bandwidth between uh, your cortex and the your digital tertiary self, then you can achieve better cohesion between what humans want and what AI does. Uh, at least that's one theory. I'm not saying this is a sure thing. It's just one potential iron in the fire. If, if ultimately you know hundreds of millions or billions of people get a high bandwidth interface to their digital tertiary self, their AI self effectively, then that that seems like that probably leads to a better future for... I, 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 